She came from the east. Stories about her had been told in yachting media and rumours passed in brokers' bars. The world expected extraordinary beauty. Her sisters that came before her promised so much. Starburst, Elada, and Dusa. But nobody could have imagined such elegant grace, such stunning proportions and jaw-dropping allure that she was to deliver. Like Helen of Troy, she sent shockwaves through the world of her time, tempting titans of industry and enticing kings of entrepreneurship. She is all that they can talk of and all that they can think about. Her name is Tatiana. Actually, that comparison with Helen of Troy really is very appropriate. Not only is the original site of Troy just a few hundred kilometers away from the birthplace of Tatiana in Istanbul, but also, as with any extraordinary beauty, she's the result of an extraordinary marriage. In this case, the marriage of British design firm H2, whose creativity and, frankly, design genius can be seen all the way through the interior of the yacht. And the other part of the marriage is unique yacht design, who've really lived up to their name, since this is such a unique look to the exterior of the yacht and great naval architecture too. I guess the question though is, is Tatiana just a pretty face? Or is there some depth of character to this goddess of the seas? Often the difference between beauty that's just skin deep and beauty that has some substance is all made by the builder. And in this case, Bilgin yachts have absolutely excelled. As we'll see, as we take a look around, And before we look at the more technical areas of Tatiana, let's take a tour of her magnificent interiors, starting right here in the Sky Lounge, where a Porsche-designed pool table keeps company with a marble bar and wine fridges, a grand piano and an inviting circular seating area just calling out for nights of fun and days of relaxation. What I really want to point out to you here though, because it's a theme throughout the H2 interior design, is the courageous use of so many materials. High gloss Makassar wood embedded in clean white marble, trimmed with stainless steel and complemented by soft fabrics and hammered steel that was done by hand at the shipyard, by the way. It all comes together to create such a delightful ambience. Forward of the Sky Lounge is a pantry to port and the yacht's lobby to starboard. On this deck we find an elevator, a day head and an office. Further forward still we find some of the crew accommodation and the bridge but we'll look at the crew quarters in detail a little later. So first let's head up the stairs past this magnificent crystal caviar chandelier to the owner's deck. This is the top deck of the yacht and forward is an observation lounge affording wonderful views and with a private foredeck offering a jacuzzi tub. A corridor to starboard takes you back through the lobby with the elevator and the changing room. And to port there is another passageway with more wardrobe space and a small bathroom. In the middle though is the main ensuite and it really is quite something. Decked in gorgeous white marble, it seems an ideal setting for the owners of this soup yacht to refresh themselves at the beginning of the day and after a relaxing sleep in this wonderful owner's stateroom.
The stateroom has a private terrace, which we'll look at a little bit later, but for now, let's see where your guests will be staying on board this yacht. And to do that, we need to return to the lobby, down the white onyx stairwell, appreciating that wonderful crystal caviar chandelier on the way, down another flight of steps, and to the lower deck lobby. Of course, we could have taken the elevator, but then you would have missed out on that beautiful decor. Forward of the lower deck guest area are two guest staterooms. To port, a spacious double with a large tub in the ensuite. And to starboard, another sizeable double, this time with a shower. Again, just look at the variety of materials that are blending together here. Backlit onyx, delightful stainless steel fittings, soft leathers, again that Makassar wood, but this time harmonizing with eucalyptus. This starboard cabin actually adjoins a twin cabin aft. It's a great arrangement for families, although of course the two cabins can also be closed off and each one has its own ensuite. While we're on this deck though, let's take a look at the great use of space aft, where to port, there is a sizable gymnasium equipped with top end techno gym equipment. And to port, we find a luxurious movie room with soundproofing for the very best acoustic experience. Now though, let's take a look at the accommodation for the rest of your guests. And to do that, we need to return up the steps Back to the lobby, where there's another day head, and bear left to a corridor that leads to a door with access to the crew accommodation, something we'll be looking at later, and four magnificent guest staterooms, so magnificent, I'll just let the images do the talking for a moment. I really have left the best until last though, as we move aft to the main deck salon. It is astonishing. And here we get the best of H2 design and also Bilgin's relentless desire to show just what they can do when put to the test by an owner that wanted something absolutely extraordinary. I should point out that most of the cabinetry that you can see here is made in-house by Bilgin. They pride themselves on this since it allows them to have a greater control of the quality and the delivery times. And then accessories such as the chandeliers and the lamps come from the world's finest design companies such as Minotti, La Suite, Crystal Caviar and Bocca di Lobo. And if you think that this was the best, when I said I'm saving the best until last, you haven't seen anything yet. Just take a look where the aft stairs lead. If I've gone quiet for a moment, it's because I am lost for words that adequately describe this beach club. And I simply don't want to cheapen it with chatter. This, surely, is what a super yacht should be like. I did tell you that she is a beautiful yacht, didn't I? But I also told you that we'd take a look at the technical areas, what lies beneath that surface beauty. Well, we can start our technical inspection of this vessel right here. The aft quarters of the beach club are used for technical areas. To starboard, we have a shore power converter room so that the vessel can cruise worldwide with no electrical incompatibilities. And to port, an emergency steering room. The heart of the yacht is here though, the engine room, where two MTU 4000 series engines lie in a double-decked cathedral of engineering excellence. 
Tatiana was built to a standard called IMO Tier 3, a standard introduced to the yachting industry to reduce carbon emissions. And you can see that the exhausts from each engine lead to a unit called an SCR. That's effectively a catalytic converter, and it's fed by add blue tanks to either side. If you'd like to know more about how this works, do let me know in the comments below. I'm quite sure that Bilgin would be happy to oblige. This is a wonderfully laid out engine room. Everything so well organized and accessible and with a dedicated and soundproofed engineer's room to observe proceedings and to keep control of the vessel. On that subject of soundproofing, I should tell you that the legendary Van Capellen himself laid hands on this project to ensure that the yacht enjoys the minimum of vibration from this powerful area so that Tatiana met the highest of comfort levels from the American Bureau of Shipping, better known as the ABS. As we descend the steps of the engine room, flanked by two of the 200 kilowatt generators, we find the third generator positioned in between the two engines. Now here, it gets really interesting because moving aft, we find two tunnels. These run beneath the swimming pool that we saw earlier and provide easy access for maintenance to the pool. Forward of the engine room though is a sizable air conditioning room, again really well thought out for maintenance. Two storage rooms. And through this door is a long corridor with dry storage to port and to starboard. A rather useful looking workbench. And look at this, access to the stabilizers for maintenance. Needless to say, this is found on both sides. Moving forward to port and to starboard is access to the fresh water tanks. We are, after all, on the tank deck. Four cold storage rooms, a transformer room to starboard, access to the stairs to the crew quarters to port, a small crew office to starboard, more cold storage to port, another two offices to starboard, followed by a laundry room with four washers and two dryers, and a separate ironing room. At the end of this corridor is a fresh water room where the water makers are located, along with four 250 litre boilers and the main manifolds for the water system. Finally, at the extreme forward end is a door leading to the bow thruster. Well, it takes a crew of 23 to look after Tatiana and to care for all her guests. And as you remember, this door leads to the crew accommodation, although of course there's various access points throughout the yacht. Since we're here though, and I know that you are interested in seeing that crew accommodation, let's take a look. At the top of these stairs is a shell door. This is designed so that crew can enter and exit the yacht discreetly, maybe if they have to bring on supplies or get rid of the garbage. They have a dedicated tender for this. Inboard is a central corridor with a crew accommodation neatly labelled and a crew mess with two tables and a small kitchen. As you'll understand, the crew were living on board by the time that we filmed this video, but they did kindly allow us to show you one of the cabins so that you can get an idea of their living quarters. Returning up the stairs, we find direct access to a wonderful galley. This really is the kind that you would find in a top-end restaurant. When you combine this with the food storage that you've already seen, both guests and crew could comfortably stay on board for many weeks without returning to shore. The galley leads to a butler's pantry, and of course, direct access to the main salon for service. Let's go back to the stairwell though, where more steps lead up another corridor with the officer's quarters. You may remember that this can also be accessed from the upper deck lobby. Here, we also find access to the bridge. Six 24 inch screens are located here allowing the captain to keep a watchful eye on the radars, the GPS, the engine parameters, and of course, all of the vessel's communication equipment. From here, the captain can of course also easily reach the two wing stations for safe maneuver of the yacht in port. And since we are on the deck, let's take a look at the deck spaces. 
The decks of Tatiana are yet another winning attribute of this seductive yacht. I've been on quite a few yachts that sometimes don't seem to know quite what to do with the deck space, but here, every deck has a very specific reason for existing. The owner's terrace has been positioned to offer complete privacy. This really is his or her space to relax. The upper deck. Now this is all about dining. A table big enough for all of your guests in a wonderful setting flanked by two bars and should you wish it, a marble topped television unit. Not to mention these stainless steel features that are all made by Bilgin themselves. This is something that Bilgin are rightly extremely proud of. The stainless steel, the teak decks with that distinctive herringbone pattern, even the deck hardware, all made in-house by this remarkable shipyard. And once again, I have left the best until last as we descend to the main aft deck that's all about pleasure. I mean, just look at it. This yacht has two swimming pools, one on top of the other, and skylights in the bottom of one to produce an extraordinary lighting effect in the other. Sun pads and seating, a beautiful bar, and easy access to jump into the ocean, a simply delightful environment in which to spend time with your family and make precious memories. And I don't care how big your neighbour's yacht is, you have nothing to envy from any other yacht when you can offer your friends and family this kind of luxury and privacy. With many yachts, you can only enjoy the aft deck as long as the crew are not launching the toys. That's not the case with Tatiana. The bow area has been used for toy storage and just look at how well designed this is. With the main tenders at 7.7 meter and a 6.5 meter Castaldi neatly positioned in the lower forward garage. And space for four jet skis in the upper forward garage. These can easily be launched and retrieved without the guests in the aft swimming pool ever even noticing. Underway, Bilgin's Tatiana is a dream. I can personally testify to the lack of vibration and remarkably low sound levels on board. But consider as well that this 80 meter long yacht with a beam of 12.25 meters can reach speeds of up to 19 knots and a half load displacement and one generator running can reach a range of 5,000 nautical miles at cruising speed. Her fuel tank can hold 155,000 litres of fuel. Her freshwater tank, 45,000 litres of fresh water. Make no mistake, this is one beautiful lady, but she's built to explore the world's oceans in the greatest of comfort. A beautiful lady for sure. Who can doubt that when you look at these interiors and that exterior profile? She is, as I said at the beginning, the result of a wonderful marriage between H2 for the interior and unique yacht design for the exterior and the naval architecture. You know, you can't just put those two things in a bag though, shake it up and hope it will come out well. It did take the passion and the craftsmanship of building yachts to put it all together so well. Building yachts have been in the yacht building game for quite some time, but I think with Tatiana, they've elevated themselves to a whole new level. And that is exactly the results they were looking for. Mm -hmm.